Let's talk about open source versus closed source AI. Is one better than the other? Is there a specific direction we should push towards to create AGI and ASI that benefits humanity? Oh, let's talk about it. Welcome to the rabbit hole. My name is Julie McCoy and I explore everything around AI, AGI, robotics, and the future of automation. I believe that we're living in an AI age. We're headed towards a future that is hard to imagine, one we've never lived in before. We are literally living in future as it unfolds. Technology is 10xing every six months, and we're going to finally have the ability to live more meaningful lives. With robotics, AI, and automation doing 98 to 100 percent of the work we didn't really want to do anyway, and we can get back to being humans. We aren't human doings. We are human beings. And AI, and the rise of technology to support a breakthrough towards AGI will present humanity with the opportunity to not have to be tied to work for a living. So again, welcome to the rabbit hole. As we get into today's topic, open source versus closed source AI, is one better than the other? Can we function with both? What should the direction be? Let's talk about what I'm reading. The better question is, what am I watching? I don't really watch a lot of TV unless it's a classic movie, something to do with technology, sci-fi, the future, the history of, or a spotlight on a great person in history. I just find much of TV a waste of brain space. So I'm not on Netflix. Instead, I'm usually on YouTube, learning from a playlist like Peter Diamandis' Moonshots, hearing interviews with leading technologists, reading books by these people, instead of picking up a movie or a show. But the exception to that rule was with the new Netflix show, Three Body Problem. And oh my God, this is probably one of my top five favorite TV shows. Three Body Problem is based on an award-winning Chinese novel called the same title, The Three Body Problem. I finished watching all eight episodes a few days ago. This show had a ton of my favorite things all in it. Strong characters that pursued opportunities to change the world for the better, even when there was a 0% chance of success. Supercomputers in the size of protons. Quantum entanglement. VR worlds created so incredibly lifelike. You could see, smell, taste, feel everything that happened in that world. I mean, these are incredible pieces of imaginative storytelling and they were all found in this story. But like most fiction tales, guess where the supercomputer in the size of a proton came from? I'll give you a second. You might have guessed it. Aliens. The Santi, an alien race in outer space that made contact with Earth through a Chinese scientist who went through horrific trauma as a young adult, witnessing her father's death and then being dragged away to a Chinese prison camp. She became full of hate for all of humanity and knowingly made contact with a hostile alien race, inviting them down to invade Earth. Some of my favorite characters in this show were Thomas Wade and Jen Chang. Thomas Wade is this old, brazen, uncouth British intelligence superior who just says it like it is, throws in a few offensive words. I really like him. Jen Chang is a young Chinese scientist who is incredibly brilliant and basically hacks science to come up with a project she calls Project Staircase, where for the first time in humanity, she gets a moving shuttle almost to the point of traveling at 1% of light speed. The show, much like the book, doesn't really end on a high note. The book is actually more negative and paints the picture of the death of humanity thanks to the alien supercomputers and technology what I love that the show did is it actually ended on a high note. Jen Chang and Saul are sitting around a pool. Their project completely failed. They're looking at the Santi alien race invading Earth in the next 400 years. Knowing this, they feel pretty down. Clarence, one of the British intelligence officers, says, come on, I've got something to show you. And he takes them to a swamp where they see the proliferation of hundreds of thousands of locusts. And he says, while these bugs swarm all around them, you know, the aliens called us bugs, which they did. The Santi took over everyone's phone, billboards, and they named the human race bugs. But Clarence says, as he looks at that swamp full of locusts, we have sprayed these things with pesticides. We've covered the ground with poison. We've stomped on them. But look, they have managed to not just survive, but thrive. There is hope for us after all. This is a good perspective to have with what's coming with AI and AGI, which by the way, did not come from an alien race. 
It's the result of multiple breakthroughs in technology and computing. It didn't drop from the sky from some alien ship. When Llama 3, an open source AI, was released by Meta this month, April 2024, here's what Mark Zuckerberg said on Dorkish Patel's podcast when he was asked about the dangers and risks of open source versus closed source AI. I think part of the reason why you make this open source is that there are a lot of other people who study this too. So yeah, we want to see what other people are observing, what we're observing, what we can mitigate, and then we'll make our, our assessment on whether we can make it open source. But I, I think for the foreseeable future, I'm, I'm optimistic we will be able to. And in the near term, I don't want to take our eye off the ball of what are actual bad things that people are trying to use the models for today, even if they're not existential, but they're like, they're like pretty bad kind of day-to-day -day harms that we're familiar with and running our services, that's actually a lot of what we have to, I think, spend our time on. And here's what Ilya Satskover, the chief scientist of OpenAI, said when he was asked the same question, should we focus on open source versus closed source? But there is another longer term argument against open sourcing as well, which is if one believes that eventually AI is going to be unbelievably powerful, if we get to a point where your AI is so powerful, where you can just tell it, hey, can you autonomously create, I don't know, a biological research lab? Autonomously. Do all the paperwork, rent the space, hire the technicians, aggregate experiments, do all this autonomously. Like that starts to get like mind-bendingly powerful. Should this be open sourced also? So my position on the open source question is that I think that there is a maybe a level of capability. You can think about these neural networks in terms of capability how capable they are, how smart they are, how much can they do. When the capability is on the lower end, I think open sourcing is a great thing. But at some point, and you know, there can be debate about where the point is, but I would say that at some point the capability will become so vast that it will be obviously irresponsible to open source models. The points that both Ilya and Mark make are completely valid. Mark makes a great point that with open source, we have the ability to take in the input of more humans and create a more diverse AI mind, so to speak. But the risks are what people will do with this technology. Ilya makes a great point that the more powerful the AI is, the more we actually need closed source systems. If we look at the definition of open versus closed source AI, open AI is when the source code algorithms and data are openly available to the public. Open AI, ChatGPT itself is one example. Closed source refers to AI systems where algorithms and data are proprietary and they're not openly shared with the public. These are commercial products built for use, potentially even inside of another product like Siri inside of an iPhone. Open source AI fosters innovation and collaboration. Closed AI gives the opportunity for more security around these systems, quality control over development and maintenance, and a consistent, reliable user experience. I think that's something David Shapiro said when he talked about this on his YouTube video is 100% true. We should be optimizing for research. Much like that scene in episode six, where Thomas Wade brings Jen Chang into a room full of old archaic thinking scientists and she hacks science right in front of them and gets a ton of doubt. She says it's our job to worry about the goal someone else's job to worry about the money. Basically, what that means is let's achieve innovation at all costs. Let's accelerate and hit massive breakthroughs that we've never hit before as a human race. And so if we optimize for research, well, we need both. We need both open source, allowing for a ton of collaboration between bright minds, not necessarily just big commercial players like Microsoft, Meta, Google, but the entrepreneur, the coder, the programmer at home that has innovative ideas. But we also need closed source AI. I work at Consonant Scale. It's a proprietary AI SEO writer built to generate content that ranks well, original, deeply researched, fact-based content. It's an incredible product with thousands of users. We don't allow anyone to jump in that code and tamper with it because then it would mess with the quality of that product. We have dedicated engineers, our own founder, our AI director work on this technology themselves. And we keep the quality deliverable high. Something our founder, Justin McGill, said when I asked him this question, is open source or closed source better? Is there one that is better? He pointed out the need for closed source. If we allow every Joe 
Schmo to mess with AI. There's a lot of danger in that. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear your perspective on this. I think as we rapidly accelerate towards AGI and ASI automating human labor, we're going to need resources and innovation and breakthroughs in both directions, open and closed source AI. And if you've watched Three Body Problem, let me know in the comments. You're my people. That was an incredible show. Subscribe to my channel, Julia McCoy, for more videos like this where we explore the rabbit hole of AI. I'll see you back here.